Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to February's Monthly Roundup. So I wasn't sure if I was going to even manage to get this monthly roundup film today. So I'm kind of delighted that I did and that it's done. Hello, welcome to February. Um, and for those of you uninitiated, this is the video where I sit down and I talk with you about the changes to my board game collection over the past month. I like to talk about trades and secondhand pickups and stuff like that. And then of course, I also like to talk about the games I've been playing. And most importantly, I kind of expect you guys to do the same thing. I love hearing what you've been playing. And if you have the energy to like, you know, write back and fill me in on what's been happening with your gaming habits. Um, so yeah, February, um, I don't know why it seems to be a more depressing month than January. I think that might be to do with the fact that lockdown has been extended here in Ireland. And oh man, even for someone who doesn't leave the house like myself very often, it's, yeah, you feel the weight of it. It's kind of wearing thin on people. And because it's a short month, I've bought less games than normal and also to do with the fact it's a new year and things like that. But as you may have guessed from the title of this video, this has been a month of expansions. Um, and we've often threatened to do that in our house where we're like, we're not gonna buy new games. We're just gonna buy expansions for games we already love. And it never really happened before. But we're finally getting to grips with this whole expansion stuff so I've lots of those to talk about this month. Um, right so I guess we should dive in um, and before I say anything else actually um, so I have timestamps in this video so you can skip along to whatever games you might actually want to hear about of course I'd love you to listen to the whole thing but those are there and it's the video is split into a variety of sections so I'll talk about games acquired and probably throw trades and things into that because you know they're non-existent then games I've played and then I throw in a bit of personal stuff at the end for those of you who are curious as to what I've been up to. Um, Okay, so let's start right away with the first game on our list of expansion expansion games. Oh, this is kind of interesting, actually. Um, so you may remember from last month's monthly roundup video that we acquired the Batman Gotham City Chronicles board game um, in a kind of bizarro way. And I didn't really approve. I, my husband was really excited. But when we played it, I actually really liked the game. Turned out to be a lot better than we thought it was going to be. So it was actually the first expansion we acquired. And this is because, um, well, I don't know if you know, this but one of the expansions the Wayne Manor one um, has a T-Rex in it <laughs> I don't know why Batman has a T-Rex please don't ask I also don't know why Batman has a bat cow but this is all in the box somewhere and so I determined that well if I was going to have to play Batman I definitely wanted to play with the T-Rex version so with a bit of searching that's what we picked up first this month and the Wayne Manor expansion has more than just T-Rexes in it it has some new game boards to play with including the bat cave I thought was very cool it has some new bodies and stuff like that um and you know kind of new characters and things to play and some new items as well it's kind of a well-rounded expansion to be fair to it and so far we have played with one kind of expansion related stuff and it seemed a little um unnecessarily over the top but i guess actually i'll explain that in the games we've been playing a bit because you know i have more to talk about when it comes to batman so yeah so that was the first pickup of the month then the second if I'm motoring on. It's going to be a small list, guys, so don't expect a lot. Um, okay, so this was a Valentine's Day present, and this is Wavelength um, from the wonderful Wolfgang Warsh, who you may know from other games such as Quacks of Quidlinburg and Die Tavern in Imtiefenthal, um, and, you know, The Mind. He's, he's made an unusual array of games, but ones we generally, generally tend to like. And I played Wavelength once before, some time ago. I think when it just came off Kickstarter, a friend of ours had gotten a copy. And it's a party game where you're trying to guess and be on the same wavelength on a topic as somebody else. So the main portion of the game consists of this wheel um, upon which there is like a little pie section that determines, you know, in what range somebody's answer is going to be. So you'll ask, you know, um, what is both or between kind of serious and hilarious. Um, and maybe you'll give a clue. So I think in our case, we give Trump as a clue. And he was 50, 50 down the middle, according to whoever gave that clue. And we were trying to figure out exactly how far in or out of that um, it might be. So it's definitely a game that wants more players. I'm a little surprised that um, my husband bought it. Sure it's been on our list for a while but 
don't really have friends anymore um, to come visit and playing it 1v1 is a little unusual but I do think it makes for a, a really fun party game and a light thing and definitely kind of a nice opener um, and how it's produced is really lovely as well because that wheel portion sits into the box where there are space for your cards while you play like little stands and things and I just I think it's a nice one um, so there was that and with that came the Root Partisan deck Dun, dun, dun. So from what I have understood, the Root Partisan deck is, well, well, when you play Root, there is a deck of cards you play with that everyone kind of draws from. And this is a different version of it. Um, so yeah, I've played with it once or twice. Um, it's funny, you know what I realized while playing with a new deck? I never really look at the deck. I just match the symbols. So, you know, did I read any of the new text or the cool things? Gosh, no, no. I was like, does this have two fox symbols? Do I have two fox symbols? What can I craft? Um, yeah, I probably should pay more attention to things like that but um i do enjoy having a little bit of variety so you know that's a nice touch there to add that in and it's also just a small thing i think as well you can pick up to kind of stretch your game a little bit more um has anyone played with the partisan deck yet are there any standout things in it that um, maybe i should keep and have, keep keep looking for as opposed to just connecting the symbols as i do most of the time and continuing on the Root height train um i now have reacquired the river folk expansion for Root which is the one that comes with the crocodiles and the cute little, see, we were calling them otters, but I'm not really sure they're otters. Does anybody know which ones they are? They're the little blue meeples. Um, yeah, I think I think we want to say otters because it kind of felt like they were building our beavers because it feels kind of like they're, they're building a dam, right? I'm sure someone will correct me on this. But um, since we've only played with them once, it's been hard to tell. Um, and I actually owned that expansion when I originally owned Root sometime a year or more ago. And then when we reacquired Root, I was like, well, we have to get back the stuff we used to have, right? So as it currently stands, I think we're up to date with everything Root related. Of course, they have released a new Kickstarter the minute we finished our collection. So there's always that if you want to check that out. I'm sure Root fans know all about it. Um, but yeah, the expansion is just, you know, more of the same good things. You know what I mean? Here's two new factions to play with. I think it also has a new board. You know, it's the kind of more of the good stuff. Um, I quite like the new factions in it. They're quite interesting. Um, so I've only seen the otters beavers oh my god what do we call them people i feel like i should look it up i'm gonna go with otters i don't know why we'll stick with that for now um and they were really interesting in the fact that they would allow you to use the river on their turns you could also use their majority in places um and you can also um the really important one here we go you can buy cards from them and this is the cool part you know what you pay for them with humans human sacrifices well, not really human sacrifices. The little meeples, you have to give them away your workers and then they get to do stuff with your workers. I think that's really, really cool and quite clever. They were up to all sorts of shenanigans. Um, and I've played the lizards um, a little bit, the lizard cult, because they make the most sense to me. And they're trying to put out the most gardens in areas around the board. Um, kind of all their movement and, you know, fighting and interaction-y stuff come from having acolytes, which means you have to have had your meeples die to go into the acolyte box. So there's that, um, but I quite like those because as you placed out your gardens you got, you could score victory points and you used your hand to determine um, what type of things you will score with or what you will do based on the symbols. So, you know, they're, they're definitely interesting and cool. Um, I think you can always say that about root factions. They're always a bit wacky and you're like, what is it they're really up to? Um, but been having fun with that. And I'll talk more about root in the games we've been playing section because that's what we've been playing. Um, and do I have anything else that we got this month? We do, but I forgot to add it to the thing. So I did manage to get an expansion for um, Argent the Consortium. So last month I waxed kind of lyrical about um, Argent the Consortium, how much I enjoyed it and I loved it. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if I could come back next month and tell you guys I had acquired the expansion I really wanted. There's one where you can get a yacht and you're able to like bribe people with it. So I was really in on that. But Argon the Consortium anyway is a game about um, sorcerers in a school um, and you are trying to kind of bid for favour um, of the people who are like the head of the school because you want to be the next one in charge. Um, and they all have different ways to do this and so you go around the various rooms of the, the school and you activate them to get the things you need to give to the guys in charge. Um, it's really, really fun. It's way more fun than I've just described it. But we really wanted to get the expansions and things because we were having so much fun with it. 
So the good news is we ordered the Technomancers expansion, which I'm pretty sure isn't its actual title, but we'll roll with it. Um, it arrived yesterday, so I haven't played with it yet. But from what I can see inside of the box is that you get um, new rooms, you get a new character, um, you also get new colored rings for the bottom of your wizards because they're like plastic things, so that's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, it just, it looks like more of the, the good stuff. Um, so that's fantastic. And not to be entirely untrue to my words, we have ordered the other expansion with the yacht, which is the summer break expansion, but due to a mix up, it hasn't arrived in time for me to tell you about it in this video. So you'll have to wait till next month. Um, that's the fun with ordering stuff from Germany now instead of the UK. So it takes that a bit longer and there's a bit more hoo-ha about it. But um, so there you go. So um, I'm really chuffed that we managed to pick both of those up. I cannot wait to try them out. And the final acquisition for this month is something a little bit more fun and it's a review copy. And this is for a game called Dungeon Day. So it's coming to Kickstarter within the next two weeks and I should have I'll go and go to review and stuff prepared for that. Um, but this is a game that jumped out at me the minute I heard what it was about. I was like, I need to be involved in this. And this is a, a dungeon game, but instead of just killing things, there are other ways to deal with monsters. So you might try and attract them, you might befriend them. Um, you know, it's a different way of dealing with a dungeon. Um, the artwork is really cute and really, really fun. Um, and I just, I think the world needs more ways of looking at things, in particular when it comes to board games. Every time you hear the word dungeon crawl, you already have an expectation of what it is. You'll have a handbook of cards, you go through the rooms, you'll kill things, you pick up items, yada, yada, yada. I really appreciate a completely different take on dungeoneering. I was like, yes, yes, we need, we need more things like this. So um, I'm dying to get my claws into it. It also arrived yesterday. Um, so that should be this weekend's work. Hopefully I'll be posting pictures about it on social media and such so you can check it out. But yeah, do you also believe that, you know, wouldn't it be great to have a fresh take on X? You know, I'm I, I, I'm holding out hope that, you know, board games are going to bring us new ideas and stuff sometime soon. Um, but yeah, really excited for that for Dungeon Date. So that's all the kind of purchases and review copies for me for this month. There are no trades because it's practically impossible to trade right now thanks to Brexit. Way too expensive. So there goes that. Um, that's going to put an end to my trading career. Um, but we'll keep an eye out for some bargains and things like that. Um, so have you added, added anything to your collection within the past month? Um, I'd love to hear about it. What made you buy it? more importantly. Um, yeah, and I definitely want to hear more about that. So we're going to move straight on to the bit where I tell you about the games I've been playing, but you've kind of heard some of this already. So we'll see how much overlap I can avoid. So right before I started recording this video, I had a look at my BG Stats app where I keep track of all the games we played and things like that. And I wanted to know what had we been playing the past month. And I'm appalled and shocked to tell you that there's one game that's come really, really out on top. And it surprised me because as you might have noticed by now, I don't normally play the same game repeatedly. I love to swap them in and out. We get new things, we get rid of old ones, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm definitely fairly flighty. Um, so when I looked down and saw that I played Root seven times in the past month, that was kind of shocking. Um, and I've been realizing that maybe I, I do have a problem or at least a difficult relationship with Root. Um, because Root is the game that when it came out, we tried it out, we played it a good couple of times, we didn't like it, we felt, nah, it wasn't for us, you needed more people and we shipped it off on its way. Um, but it's the game I never really got out of my head and every time I saw people talk about it or post pictures, I was like, oh yeah, Root, I kind of miss Root. So for Christmas, my husband got me a copy of Root and I was like, yay, Root. And I was wondering what it would feel like coming back to it after having tried it before and it being kind of a failed experiment. And Root felt great. It felt really fun. It felt kind of light actually. And we could play it relatively quickly. And for certain it's got issues, which is, you know, the first time you play a new faction, give up any chances of winning. Probably the second or the third time too, before you really wrap your head around it. And also the fact that certain factions just don't necessarily play particularly well to player, right? Because we are playing this only the two of us. Um, but for whatever reason, Root has really captured my imagination a bit. Um, and I've been kind of on uh, a journey to try and understand it as best I can. I think with Root, you do have to have that kind of inquisitive nature. You do want to, you know, you, I think you need to go, well, I want to do that better next time, or I want to know how to do it right, or I want to know what the best option was in that scenario. You got you to gotta learn from your plays. Um, this isn't a game really of going through the steps, although you can definitely do that. I don't think you'll get as much out of it. 
So like, for example, we, when we first, the River Folk first arrived, we played um, the otters <laughs> um, versus the crocodiles. Um, and that seemed to be an absolutely terrible matchup. Um, I beat my husband silly with them because they, he had no one to trade with. He'd no one to use his boats on the river. And I don't think we'd really figured out as well that you could kind of use his majorities um, in different zones and stuff like that. And it was a no-go. But between us then we went, well, what could we have done differently? How should we have approached this? And then we, we learned a few things. And I was like, okay, so it's actually worthwhile, you know, buying those things from you to do this. And if I'd been smart, I was I was, should have bought his cards from him. But I think there's a tendency when you play a board game to instantly go, well, I'm not gonna help somebody else because that doesn't help me. Root's very different. Um, Root can really set you up with, we'll help each other to a point, or I will help you with this, but then I'll be able to prevent that from growing kind of later um, and I think it's fascinating um, so I spent weeks just playing the vagabond um, so that I could learn to you know play it against um, other factions and things like that really get to grips with it and then only recently I went to the different version of the vagabond where I could have weapons and crossbows and things and then I finally got called a hobo with a shotgun because I figured out how I could attack people I hadn't really done that before um, and I'm, we're playing it and playing this and playing this and I find the minute we play one game and like oh we may as well play another it doesn't take that long to set up we can play it in about 40 minutes um so you play two of those um and yeah we're having a really really good time with it and i'm surprised and elated this is the first time in forever where i've wanted to play a game really on repeat as in it's like at the forefront of my mind we sit down and like what do you want to play and i'm like why don't we play root and there's never any objection there's never any issues and we we like it despite it being you know it's got problems for sure especially two players got problems um but you know i'm enjoying it and we're both enjoying it so yeah so lots of plays of root this month um have you ever got hooked on a game have you ever played something you're like i want to play that again and again and again and again it's kind of a rare thing around here so i'm not really sure where to go with it but for now i'm going to write the root wave and see where it takes me um but yeah so that's been a lot of fun so second thing i suppose we've been playing but i uh, definitely less than root like most things less than root is glenmore 2 chronicles because um i mentioned that i picked this up last month so this month i've had the privilege of playing it twice um, so if you're unfamiliar with Glen Moore, this is its kind of updated version and it really is about being Scottish and building out a clan, building out your kind of lands around you, they're little squares, it's kind of like Carcassonne like that, you build everything out, but each square will have an ability that you can activate upon it by placing a tile um, near it, I'm going to say near it very vaguely, um, but you know that kind of way, and so you're trying to trigger everything to give you bonuses, to do stuff and things like that. Um, the fun part about it is, is that when you buy the tiles, they're in a little roundel of sorts, and you're all in a queue, and the person in last place always gets to go first. And it doesn't cost you anything to buy these tiles, but just take up space. So it's a little bit like patchwork like that, if you've played that. Um, so you can get whatever tile you want, but you may not have a go for a number of turns in exchange. Um, so yeah, so it's fun. Um, so we always like the original version. I have the oldie, oldie one here. Now I have the newer one, and it is it is kind of lovely, actually. The artwork, the meeples. If anything, it's a little over the top for such a simple game, I think, but I can appreciate it. Um, and this one then now has like a clan tracker board is what I'm calling it, which is kind of nice as well. So there's when you can run into like people through history and you'll put out a marker on this board and it will give you a bonus and you can follow along the different tracks to earn different bonuses as well. Um, yeah, overall, it's a nice game. It's the same as I remember. It's got a bunch of different kind of interchangeable options for how you play to make the game feel different. That's kind of cool. Um, I don't think we've actually played with any of those yet because every time it was kind of like the first time. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. If you liked clans before, you'll like uh, cl clans. I really want to call it clans of Caledonia. Did I call it that before now? I might have done. Who knows? Glenmore 2 Chronicles. Um, they have the same colour boxes, by the way, from the outside. It's got that sky on it. But um, yeah, good stuff. Um, quite like that. That was pretty, pretty great. Um, so yes, okay. Now, next up was the Wingspan Oceana expansion, which also was picked up last month. And we actually played Wingspan twice in the past month, which is new for us. We have a tendency to only play Wingspan when the expansions come out, because we're like, woo, new birds, let's play with it. Um, 
And as always, Wingspan makes something lovely. Um, this expansion is a little different than the previous one because it's not just a big stack of birds. What's actually here is you get new player boards as well that are different than your original ones. Not sure how I feel about those, to be honest. I kind of like the original ones. These new ones are, I don't know. Um, but you also, there's a new type of good, which is nectar. So it's kind of like a wild good, but it goes away at the end of each turn. So you kind of want to use it up. And there is a prize for which person has the most nectar in each kind of sections on your board. And of course, there are more birds um, with different kinds of abilities and things like that. So yeah, it's more delicious, delicious Wingspan. Um, and I've, you know what? I've forgotten what a classy game Wingspan is. Um, it's just, it's so good and it's so easy to teach and so mellow. Like it's the game where you could lose all the time and never mind, you know, that kind of way. Um, so yeah, Wings, Wingspan always has a special um, place in our heart, even if it doesn't get taken off the shelf overly often. It's definitely something we play with other people probably more than we play with ourselves. Um, but yeah, Wingspan is just a classy act. Um, so yeah, so those of you who actually have got the Wingspan expansions, which one is your favourite? The European one or the Oceania one or just, you know, plain old original Wingspan? Um, I'd love to mush them all together, but I don't think that's allowed. Also, I do not want to have to separate all those cards afterwards. But um, yeah, so we've been having a bit of fun playing Wingspan as well. It's nice to revisit kind of those oldies that you're like, oh yeah, I really like this. It's good stuff. Yeah, so that's Wingspan. So now I think I've covered everything I missed from last month to tell you about this month. Um, and I suppose I'll wrap up with a little bit more about Batman because I threatened I would. Yeah, I did. So yeah, the Batman um, expansions and just the Batman game as a whole is really starting to shine a little bit for me and I'm learning a little bit more about it as we play it. The first thing I will mention is I hate, hate, hate the boards that you play on. Um, because the boards that you play on have different lines of sight um, for, to be able to see somebody, to be able to shoot somebody and to be able to attack somebody. And all of the board is split into these little sections. So you move between them. They're not rooms, these sections. They don't count really um, for a lot of anything other than movement, it seems. And there are certain parts of the board that are entirely impenetrable that, you know, you have to walk around to a door to use, but they're not marked on the board. I can't see where they are. There, there's a little guide for them in the rule book where it shows you where there should be a yellow line, but there's none down on the board. Um, and oh goodness me, that kind of wrecks my head a bit. Cause every time I feel like I know where I'm going in the map, then it's like, no, there's a wall there. You can't go through that. I'm like, what? I just planned, you know, a couple of turns around doing that. So that's being frustrating. Um, yes, there's still tons and tons of symbols. Um, but if you print out the player rate, um, it's pretty good. Um, I was having fun with the different characters, actually, and um, learning their different abilities and figuring out what they were they were good for, you know, what you should use with each. And each scenario in the game um, recommends what characters you should be using on what different maps. I actually find the stories on the maps really entertaining. Um, and I'm going to tell you this one about the expansion because it was my favourite. So the T-Rex had just arrived, ho ho ho, and we had to play a game with the T-Rex. And so it started up with building out the back cave. So I was like, cool, we're going to be in the back cave. Then it built out a completely other board of like a bank, right? Um, so there's two separate boards and I had three characters. So I had Batman and Robin and I had the Oracle, who's some chick in a wheelchair with some kind of mind powers. And I thought she was kind of cool. And she's in the back cave. And Batman and Robin have been lured to the bank because Penguin and a bunch of other bad guys are, are trying to rob the bank or pretending to rob the bank to distract Batman away while the rest of the bad guys are trying to get into the Batcave. So I was like, okay, that's a little bit weird. But the Batcave has a whole bunch of kind of ways of defending itself, one of which is a T-Rex. Yes, yes. But there's a bunch of drones and kind of cameras and turrets and things like that. And bat bots. Yeah, I know, it's silly. Um, and so the whole point of the Batman and Robin scenario is, is that they're in the bank dealing with the bodies. But if they can get to a particular computer, they can activate parts of the Batcave to kind of fire automatically. And in the meantime, the Oracle sitting there using her mind power is trying to move everything around and she needs to kill bombs down in the zone there because the bad guys are blowing the place up um, and then there's a computer which you can hack into to cancel everything and that's important so I spent most of the game dealing with the Batcave stuff I gave up on Batman and Robin they all got swamped down by a bunch of baddies um, and all those bat bots were doing the work for me um, and there was Bane down in the Batcave and so we were contending with this but what really happened was I managed to defuse two bombs then Bane got stuck in an elevator and then there was no one left to um, actually hack into the computer to win the game or to stop 
off the bombs, um, other than the T-Rex. So the T-Rex hacked his way into the computer and saves the day. <laughs> you couldn't make that stuff up, could you? I have to admit it was very Adam Westy Batman. And I think I think we had a good we had a good laugh with that. Because I like that most of the game is not really fighting against each other, it's outsmarting each other on a map. God I wish the map was better, but this is what we have. Um, and I just, I liked it. I just thought it, it was so much fun. Um, like it's silly and it's a bunch of dice rolling, but I think the way the, the story is put together is actually kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so I've been having a lot of fun with Batman. I've been trying to get some other expansions for Batman. There's one that's a uh, kind of for kind of designed for two players and allows you to pick who you play with as opposed to having a preset group. So we're working on that, but Batman's expensive, like really expensive. Um, so yeah, there's that. But so that's the kind of fun we've been having this month. Um, it's been a bit random, hasn't it? It's like, yeah, Batman and Root. Um, hmm, yeah, it's true. But it's been a kind of a quiet month around here. So um, yeah, so tell me, what have you been playing? Maybe it's been far more exciting than what I've been up to. Have you any cool gaming moments um, that you'd love to tell me about? Because I would really love to hear them. I love that thing. I'll be going on about that T-Rex till the end of time. <laughs> we just kept wondering, how does he hack into a computer? Like, does he use his claws? Or does he like dunk his head on the side of it? Um, I don't know. Um, we, you know, only, only time will tell. Um, so yeah, I would love, I would love to hear some of your great gaming stories. Okay, so that's everything um, I've been playing and stuff like that. And I'm going to hear about yours. And then the usual bit comes where there's a wish list. Um, I guess what I'm wishing for is some more of the Batman expansion stuff. I'm very eager to have it kind of complete just to play with all of it of course i would also love a copy of calico but that's like crazy out of print so we'll have to give up on that dream sometime soon but i guess you know what i'm not too like oh i need to buy this and i need to buy this and i need to buy that i think as things come up that is that is plenty for me and we're happy with that so yeah so tell me all about what you've been up to and we'll roll on to the final section where i'm going to talk a little about me i guess mm, you're welcome to join me if you like Okay, since you managed to stick it right down to the end, I'm going to give you a little secret. There's actually something else on my wish list, but it's not really on my wish list, but it kind of is. So I thought I'd share it with you. Um, so I guess I guess what I'm asking is, have you um, ever been really involved in some part of the hobby or whatever, and you give it up and you miss it? Um, and for us, that's two things. Um, we used to play a lot of Magic the Gathering, used to buy a lot of cards, we used to draft every week, we'd go to all the events, we used to drive around in the crack of dawn and come home way late at night. Um, and it was it was great, great fun. Um, and also we used to play a lot of war games. And it's funny because we were sitting around chatting with a friend during the week, we were kind of reminiscing upon the olden days. And it's funny, you know, how you're like, how did, how did all that end? How did, you know, we give up on the stuff that we really loved a lot? Um, and I guess it's just, you move on to new things, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so the third thing on my wish list, I guess, would be to have a, like to play War Machine. Um, does anybody remember that? So, you know the way there's Warhammer with the models and you have the battles? Well, there was War Machine where you had the models and you had the battles, but they were all kind of steampunk power, you know, that kind of stuff. They were, that was fun. And we used to play that like once a week, there would be five of us here of a Saturday and we would play, you know, two games a piece. Um, and they were kind of, there were good times and we were remembering it really fondly and we're like, why don't we do things like that anymore? Now, ignoring the whole people problem. Um, but it's funny, isn't it? Um, kind of, of how you evolve as a gamer over time. And I wonder, has that happened to anybody else as well? Where like, I used to do this, this and this, but it kind of all went out of fashion or you kind of, you gave up on it or it was too much. Um, um, I wonder, you know, will that happen with board games too? Um, I hope not. I've been playing board games a long time now, so it would be nice to keep it as a hobby, of course. Um, but yeah, that's the, the weird thing. I'm longing for the past, because I'm sure I'm remembering it a lot better than it actually was. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, a funny, it's a funny thing. It's just something that's been going on in my mind a little bit. So I want to hear what did you 
used to play or what was your old kind of hobby that before you got like all the way into this one and I'm assuming most of you are all the way into this one if you're watching videos about it um but otherwise you know this has been a ooh, stressful kind of month it's funny I got through January fine but by the time you get to February it's just like oh gosh whew. um but I've been plowing on trying to get as much stuff um done as possible and trying to have as much fun with everything as I can as well so yeah I got a number of good reviews done I have a couple of Kickstarter previews lined up soon so that should be really exciting and um, there's been a couple of new episodes of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast Cast. if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet you probably should um and of course there's always the there will be games website which hosts some of my videos and things like that so if you're interested in like you know finding new people to follow or to read or to whose videos to watch it's a really good place to start um but now that i've got all that kind of important stuff over i'm i'm gonna say you know the lockdown is wearing really thin especially when board games are kind of are your hobby but they're also kind of like your job and then there's nowhere else to go and no ways to distinguish in between um yeah it's been it's been weird and um, like the lockdown here in Ireland has been extended for another two months I think it is now and I thought we were kind of coming to the end of it I was looking forward to that um so it's all just a little weird and all just a little samey and I know I'm not the only one who's going through this right I assume everyone else is just as exhausted and and stressed out about everything that's going on in the world right now um as I am but it's just it's such a strange thing isn't it um it's such a strange thing but otherwise, I suppose, yeah, I suppose I'm still here. It's been a relatively okay month. I don't think I'll waste your time because it's been such a short month. Um, but yeah, all, all kinds of good stuff. I'm looking forward to playing some more games next month. I wonder when we have any more expansions. It's been a strange expansion month, hasn't it? Um, good stuff. But yeah, thanks as always, I suppose, for watching. Yeah, I don't have much news for you this, this month, do I? No, just trundling along. I suppose like the rest of you is. I, I hope everybody is keeping well and that you're all doing okay um and you know i'm sending you guys my love through the camera because times are tough right now and hopefully next month will bring kind of better feeling of things it's getting brighter in the day you know a little bit of a stretch in the evening as they say yeah th things will come around so until next month i'll talk to you soon and keep your eyes peeled for some more videos yeah all right take care everybody Bye bye